Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. And I want you to open your Bibles to Colossians 2, 6 and 8. You know, since the beginning of, the, of if you read Genesis, I, I encourage you to read your Bible. Uh, I've been saved for this December. I'm turning 21. That's why I look good. I'm turning 21 of my new life in Jesus. So I'm turning 21, but in 21 years, there have been so much turbulence sometimes in life. You would encounter, you're going to encounter blows. You're going to encounter turbulence. You're going to encounter so many things. But the word, we need to know the word because we need to declare who we are. How do we know? Like, are you one of those people who, are, who here is so detailed? Like, you want to know, like, you read the claim, like, everything. Only a few? Oh, bless you, bless you. Because only a few people love to. I cannot read a book. I need to read from the forward to the end. And they even uh, advise you to buy other books. I need to read what books. Uh, it's, I'm. I believe it's a gift, or it could be, like, annoying, right? But I'm that, that kind of person that I need to know. I need to know my rights. I want to know, like, whenever I will be in a different job and they present you the package, I'm not one of those people that just sign. I want to know what benefits I have, right? I want to know. I want to be in compliance. I want to have the benefits. I want everything. And so you and I, the Bible says that you and I are not only are children of God, you and I represent him on this earth. You are his ambassador that means that we represent the kingdom of heaven and that's a big job right i don't know what you're representing when you go to work wherever you go what are we representing are we bringing really heaven to earth but we give him a taste of hell right because there's times that in life that we're gonna feel like you're going through hell have you ever felt like going through hell only me only the pastor I call hell when, when, when things are getting heat, you know, it's heated. It's, it's, you're like, I don't know if I can withstand this heat. But don't confuse hell when, when God is refining you. Because when God refines us, we also go through fire. Not hell, but through fire. Because he's bringing out the impurities, all the things that need to come out. So let me read this scripture, and then we'll jump in into the good stuff. Because it's good stuff. I'm going to talk about roots. The Bible says that the only roots that you and I should have, first of all, he calls us to be rooted in Christ, right? So if I'm rooted in Jesus, that the only roots that should be spreading, can you put the picture again of the, of, of the tree? Okay, praise Jesus. You see, all those, all those roots that they're expanding, they're going deeper, all of those roots should be roots that reflect who we are in Jesus Christ. That roots that are going deeper should be, uh, you know what, I, I, am, I am being fruitful and I am multiplying in forgiveness. I am multiplying in grace. I am multiplying in his grace. I am multiplying in being merciful. I am multiplying in faith. Those are the roots that we should be going deeper because we are rooted in Christ, right? So let me read you the scripture. It says, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him. Walk in him rooted and build up in him and establish in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world and not according to Christ. It says be rooted. And I am a, I'm a, I'm a nerd. I call it a nerd. You need to be a nerd for the word of God. Like, what does that mean? You know, we are, go Google it. You know, I Google everything. We, now we don't have a, to buy a concordance. Remember before, I still have a concordance. It's this thick, right? But now we don't have to. You could go on the computer. I suggest that you go through, it's called Blue Letter Bible. And it, it's all the concordance and then some. And so I'm the one that I want to know, what does it mean to walk in him? We said, yeah, it's, it means to live in him. But what it means, it means to be occupied. 
You need to be occupied. Since we're going to live in him, my mind, my heart, my life need to be occupied in the things that please God, in the, in the things that please my father. It says to conduct oneself, to regulate oneself, the key is oneself. It says walk in him. That means that you and I, are you learning how to regulate yourself? Are you learning how to conduct you, yourself? You know, we always hear it, and I think that's what people, you know, we, we say, we, I want to see this church, and I know that I will see it, but I want to see people that have never experienced Christ come to Christ and experience and taste the goodness of God. I want that with all my heart. Because I want them to believe that you, when we're rooted in Jesus Christ, no matter what comes our way, and believe me, I've been through hell and back in 21 years, and I'm still here. Why? Because of Jesus. If I wasn't rooted and grounded in him in times that have been so hard for me, I think I would have been gone. Goodbye. Where is pastor? We don't know. Maybe in El Salvador. <laughs> or France, doing a missionary trip that she felt that God called her. But it says be rooted. It says to conduct oneself. It says to regulate one's life. A lot of people are not attracted to, to be part of, you know, they always say organized religion. Well, church is not an organized religion. Church is an organism. It's alive. But because you and I do not reflect, and I'm including myself, you and I, many times we do not reflect our roots. We do not reflect the, the conduct in, 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 the, uh, in the character of Jesus Christ. Say, I've been one of them. But it says to regulate oneself. And so you hear it, and now it's popular. It's a trend. It's such a trend to say, you know, I'm not being fed, so I'm going to go to that place. Dude, you never regulated yourself. You never conducted your life yourself. You want other people to regulate you, but when they're trying to correct you, you're like, oh, I don't think so. God speaks to me. God told me. Right? We all, I like that card. You know, sometimes I have take it out of my back pocket, and I tell my husband, God told me. So it's no, there's no discussion here. God told me that you need to take me out and buy me a pair of shoes. <laughs> well, God told you, right? I'm just teasing, but we say when we don't want to discuss and we don't want to, we are not for talks. We're not negotiating here. This is what I want, and this is what I'm going to do. God told me. But being rooted in him, it means that you check yourself. And are we really rooted in here, in him? And a lot of people that want more, I ask the first time, how many times are you in the word a week? Well, because I go to work. See? I go to work at this time, so that means that. Uh, I'm going to say now that I, sh I should have had an emoji with that zipper on it. And then the one that was like that on Sunday, right? <laughs> and then, then this, you know, that's my part. Like, I need to create one that goes like this, like, you know, shut it. <laughs> In a good way, you know what I mean? In like, don't say, don't say that you're not being fed. Just say, you know what, I, I am done. It was good. Thank you that, you know, I enjoyed it being here, but now I feel like I need to move on. Why not just tell the truth? Right? Like, just say it. Like, say it. Be bold. Don't send the text. Just, just come and say it. Don't Facebook me. Just tell me. You know what? Thank you. It was awesome. And I would say, in Jesus' name, be blessed. Go be a blessing at the house. Thank you for helping us. And that's that. See, that, that's, that's, that's developing the character of Christ. When we're able to face things, like, oh, I don't want to say it. You know, I'm one of those people that I'd rather text. But then, because Siri doesn't understand my accent, she's, <laughs> I was like, Siri, you're a racist. <laughs> One time I got into an, uh, I, was, I was arguing with her. And this is true. I was like, you don't understand me. And she went up like, she, said, she was sassy. <laughs> and I said, on top of that, you're disrespectful. And then she said, is that what you think? Yes, Siri. <laughs> then I thought, where is this going? It's going in through uh, some sort of cloud. Who takes care of that cloud? When I delete that thing, who hears? Can you imagine there's someone sitting listening to all the things that we talk with Siri? <laughs> Siri, I feel lonely today. Do you have a friend? Yes, Siri. 
And we are in not communicating very well. <laughs> now Siri it has become my friend because now she understands how I speak. So we have no problem. But then before she was sending all these messages that I never meant to say crap. I never meant to say all these things. <laughs> I said, I'm not going to say it. But Siri, I said Siri, and then I would text, it was Siri, not me. So you see, you, and I was really upset at Siri. She hurt me because she misrepresented me. And so the people are reading my text, representing me, so now I'm hurt with Siri, right? And then you get angry at Siri. So I got my phone and I threw it, pretending that it was Siri because she's going to feel it, right? <laughs> Cracked my phone, picked it up, and repented True story, four years ago, no, no, I have grown. <laughs> to be rooted, he says, to cause to strike root, to strengthen with roots, to render firm, to fix, to establish, cause a person or a thing to be broadly, uh, truly grounded. See, he wants us to be truly grounded, like there is nothing that will move you no matter what comes our way. And Jesus said he made a promise, right? And we always say that he said that he never would believe us. He will never forsake us. And we say it, but there is times in your life that you feel like, where are you? But if we're rooted and we're grounded and the more we say it, the more we become and we, we not only believe it, but we walk it. Because one thing is to believe in Jesus. One thing is to walk in Jesus. You know, the Paul said that when he talked about, you know, the, the, uh, it says, Paul, in, in, I think it's in Acts, when he says that demons believe in Jesus. They believe in him. Not even us. And so just because we're living, we believe in something doesn't mean that we're walking, we're living, and we're grounded, we're abiding, we're staying in that place, and we're growing. So the word for you tonight is that we need to grow, we need to stay, we need to abide no matter what comes our way. We need to be rooted, we need to be grounded, so when the enemy comes, you know what? The blows are going to come, but I'm not going to be moved. Move, what I'm saying when I mean not going to be moved is that our faith might be shaken, but you know what? I'm rooted. And the enemy is not going to lie to me. And the enemy is not going to, I'm not going to allow him. I'm not going to have in peace talks with him. We have more dialogue with the enemy than with God. Think about it. Our thoughts, we are constantly, no, no, I'm not that. I'm not that. The enemy says, well, you're this, you're that. And we're responding to him. You know what? No. I've been practicing for two weeks. A thought comes, it's like, I talk to Jesus. Not my hand, but Jesus. I'm going to let Jesus respond for me. I'm going to be, 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 let Jesus be. Pastor uh, Tim said it last week. We have an advocate. When we're being accused by the devil, we have an advocate. That means someone who represents us. Someone we can go, you know what? It's like you go le legal representation in the kingdom. And it's free. Someone's talking about you, okay, now, before I call so-and-so, let me go talk to my advocate. Let me go talk to Jesus. Let me can see what he thinks. What should I do in this situation? Have you ever done it? I've done it a couple times. No more than that, but, you know. But that's what I mean about being rooted. My next series, mini-series, will be from roots to being rooted. You know, because when we allow, and I'm going to talk about today about one of the roots that is so dangerous and so, is so sneaky, and it's an underground root. You know, when we say underground, it means it's, it's hiding. You don't even know when and how it got there. And we all, you need to know that in this life, like, as I say, you all going to experience, uh, you know, when I came to, 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 when I became a Christian, I thought, Oh, my gosh, I, I was so excited, right? Because people just tell you, like, pe people give their testimonies, and they, t they start telling you, you know, I was delivered from this, I was delivered from that. And I was like, oh, my gosh, deliverance is mine. I just want someone to pray for me and deliverance. And I, they, I went for prayer, someone prayed for me, but I wasn't delivered. And I'm talking about issues that I had in my life because God wants to develop 
our character. We, the moment we give our lives to Jesus, our spirit joins with his spirit, and now we are one in him. But now the soul, the mind, and their emotions, that needs to be developed in him. That needs to be growing in and being rooted. So I was, I was a bitter person for a long time. Who is here is bitter? No, just kidding. No, no, don't raise your hand. <laughs> I was hoping that like, and somebody would like, like he went sneaky, you know. But you know when you're bitter, you don't even know that you're bitter. You don't know that you're bitter. But one of the things that I realized is when you're bitter, you, the first sign is you blame everybody else but yourself. It was my mama. It was because of my daddy. It's because I was born in El Salvador. It's because Oprah didn't give me the right, it didn't give me the right, you know, counsel. I watched her show, but she, I don't think he, she gave me the right counsel. It's my boss. It's my so-and-so. It's my, my spouse. It's my kids. But you're the last one to point the finger. And I'm going to tell you that the bitterness and anger, I'm going to tell you, it, it, it's, it's, it's a process. We're, there's a lot of people that are not in church anymore because they are hurt, right? You heard. Hey, I've been hurt in the church. Okay, but that doesn't mean I'm going to abandon who I am in Jesus because I've been hurt. You are going to get hurt. May I tell you? You are. Someone is going to hurt you. Someone in life, if you're breathing, Maybe you haven't experienced hurt, but in some point in your life, you are going to get hurt. In some point of your life, you're going to be disappointed. In some point of your life, you're going to be disillusioned with life. In some point of your life, you're going to taste betrayal. In some point of your life, you're going to taste pain. In some point of your life, you're going to taste all those things. If you're breathing, you will deal with that. It comes with it. I had many opportunities to flee growing, you know, growing in the church and things that, you know, that hurt me. Okay, but if it hurts you, you know that anger? Anger is, it's, it's, it's not just, I, I'm just angry. Have you met people that are so angry? I just want to hug them. I'm going to tell you why. Because anger comes from hurt. Someone, I don't know if I can say this word. I, don't, I haven't heard my husband say this word. So, Someone pissed you off and you're like, <laughs> is that a bad word? I don't know. I'm not from here. <laughs> <laughs> I've been exported, right? So, so I don't know. But someone made you really upset, okay? If that's a bad word, let's cut it. Let's not tell my husband. Pastors say, very, if you get really upset, so forget the other word. I don't know. I use it. I don't think it's bad, but if you think so, don't write me a letter. I don't want to know it. <laughs> you have to tell me on my face, and I'm serious about that. All right. So when someone hurts you really bad, and you don't deal with the hurt, the next steps is you go into being angry. If you don't deal, we need to deal with hurts. And sometimes because we feel that, hey, I'm a Christian, hurt, we don't get hurt, we don't get offended. Oh, be quiet. You're the most sensitive person. No one can tell you where to sit because now I'm leaving here from here. Like, can, can we be real? Because we're, we're learning, right? So it comes from hurt. I mean, I could sit here and tell you my life and how angry and upset and frustrated I was. Think about the other word, but don't say it. <laughs> then from them, I went to being so like, oh, oh, they deserve it. You go into this process. It is not a process of wholeness. It's a process of defilement. Because I'm talking to Christians, right? Defilement. What does it mean? God consecrated us. God said to be holy. Holy means like, oh, my God, I'm pure. I don't, do, I don't think things bad. No, it means you're consecrated and you're set apart. 
So that brings you into this place. And then once you're in the second phase, it's just so easy, so easy. And bitterness just comes in. And you don't even know when it is. How did it get there? You will be shocked. Oh, how many people in this room has some of the greatest potential that God has given you such talents and potential. You have a great call. You have a great purpose. But yet you are contaminated with bitterness. And you don't even know it. Wouldn't it be nice that we would have like those glasses? And you're like contaminated, 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 contaminated. But it's not for that. It's, it's, it's to deal with our lives. And, um, you know, everything that uh, God gives you comes in a form of a seed. Right? The, the Bible says it's the master seed of faith. That we can, we can do so much. And I'm going to... Gosh, already my time? I just started. Come on. <laughs> they should give me like two hours to preach next year. Okay, so have you seen the mustard seeds here? They're big. So I'm going to pass this one down because this one is from Israel, and a friend of mine brought it. So she told me this. I'm giving to you this. Th you can't even see it. This is a seed of a mustard seed from Israel. So I'm going to pa pass it around. So you see, you're going to pass it around to everybody. So I want you to see how little, how little our faith needs to be if we cultivate it. Look how tiny it is. You pass it. The ones from here, they're huge. You can see them. You can eat them. That one, you're like, you need like a magnifying glass. You see, you guys are a lot now like looking at it. Everything is a seed. When we say roots, roots, they have to come out of a seed. So what are we planting? What are we doing with our lives? And I'm speaking to myself, not just because I'm a pastor. Oh, my God. No, no, no. All of us, we just have different callings. We just got different purposes. But we all experience the same things. But it's what do we do when we encounter those things? And I'm going to tell you that the seed of bitterness, it's, it's hurt. That's the seed. Because tiny seed, you won't even know how it got into your heart. And that seed of bitterness and hurt, it could be intentional. Like, like someone really hurt you. And they meant it. And you wanted to punch them, but now you're a Christian. And now you're really upset. I, and you're like, how dare they? They should know better. Well, we have Jesus. I should know better. Like my husband said on Sunday, no matter how good we are, we can never be gooder. That's not even a word, but you know, you add it to the, to the Virginia dictionary. <laughs> you can never be good enough to please Jesus. You know, the only thing that you and I, that we can do to please Jesus is to live by faith. Because if you live by that seed, you guys already lost it from Israel. <laughs> That's how small it is. And the point was made. <laughs> don't feel bad. No, seriously, don't feel bad. I said, I'm going to pass it around. It's so tiny. If we were holding one from here, we will find it. But this little thing is tiny. It's almost like a grain of sand. And Jesus was speaking about that seed. Because it comes from Israel. I was like, this, Lord, really? I can please you with this. I can plant it in my heart. And I can bear fruit out of this little tiny thing. And I can speak to that mountain and command it to move from one side to the other with this little tiny seed. But so is the seed of bitterness. Because it branches out. You, don't, you cannot miss part two because, you know, this is a mini-series. You have to know, like, mini means mini. I believe that it's time that you and I check ourselves and say, you know, and we think of bitterness. I'm not bitter. You know what bitterness means? I'm going to read you one scripture and then I'm closing. 
Deuteronomy 29, 18 says, so that there may not be, he's talking about, this is God talking to the Israelites, and, and he's telling him, I don't want you to defile yourself with, with the world, right? You should read it because it gives you names of the people around them, people that didn't fear God, people that have in idolatry. Well, we don't have statues now, but we have an iPhone, right? We have smartphones. You, you can, we can be, what do you worship? Maybe you worship your job. Maybe you worship your career. Maybe you worship, you know, social media. Maybe you're addicted to social media. I see people now, you know, nobody looks up. I mean, if I'm going to go eat, I want to be, I want to talk to somebody. I don't want to be passing texts, hey, how you doing? And we, that's how they eat. They're like, with the same people. But he says, this is what he says, so that there may not be among you men or women or family or tribe whose heart turns away today from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of those nations. You're like, but I don't serve other God. Well, who is your God? Who do you worship? What do you worship? Do you worship your days off? Nobody touches my days off. Well, you worship your day off. Think about things like that. Let, let us come out of the box and say, you know what? I'm pretty good because I don't even have an image. Believe me, I used to have the image in my house. There were more candles of the Virgin Mary. Or I don't know what. The bathroom was full of candles. Watch Nacho Libre and you'll see what Pedro did. That was my bathroom. You're afraid like you, you can't even take a bath because your hair could get on fire. Right? But not all of us are like that. Not all of us are like that, but we worship something. And it says, those hearts turn away from God, from the Lord our God, to go and serve the gods of these nations, and that they may not be among you a root of bearing bitterness or wormwood. This is a woman, a man, a family, a tribe, a nation. That means our nation. Are we defiled because we are worshiping something else? We're being rooted in somebody else's opinion. Who is speaking? Who is planting? Who have you allowed in your heart to just, you open your heart and they're just, they're just telling you their offenses and now you're offended by them. There is one person in the Bible that, um, that I will go over and I'll go over it next week and at the end of the service I encourage you to all of us get on the floor and let's look for that seat I'm just kidding no, I'm just kidding <laughs> oh it's going okay you guys have good eyes but it's one person that life was so hard that all her losses in life you're gonna, we're going to lose some things sometimes we need to grieve there's these friendships that maybe you had such a good friend but now you don't have her and it hurts right it hurts and we have to grieve it and we have to go through the process, not of like being angry, hurt, and, and from there we're going to be angry and bitter. No, we have to go into that process of, you know what, I thank you, Lord, that she or he was in my life for such a time. But now they have moved on and if they hurt you, Father, I, I, I surrender them to you. And I thank you that my heart will abide in you, that I will be rooted in you, that I will not allow, that I will guard my heart, and I will not get any resentment. I'm not going to let any offense, I'm not going to let any hurt defile me. You're not going to get any losses in your life. Limit who you are. You're not, not going to let any past, any hurt, any offenses, whatever. You name it, fill in the blank. You're not going to let that bleed into your present. Because we're letting it bleed into our presence because it hurts. And then it pollutes our future. It contaminates our future. We won't see it. You won't see it. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.